<laughs> and I'm not allowed to mention how often me and Andy used to go out and pull loads of birds. Five, ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sebastian. Battle, battle to my friends, or alibi to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and I am today the best man. I am very nervous, as I'm sure most of you can tell. Andy's told me that if I do a good enough job today, he'll let me do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> understand what a terrific privilege it is. It's obviously fantastic to be the best at something. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm supporting a very dear friend, someone I've known for a very long time. But most of all, I'm really pleased to be stood here in front of you all today. Because for the first seven years that I knew Andy, I was convinced he was gay. <laughs> to mine late at night. Mum was asleep upstairs and as we stumbled around we couldn't find a spare duvet. So after a while I said to him he could sleep in my bed but he needed to keep to his side. I left him in the kitchen texting one of our catches from that night and went to bed with the words echoing, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> Very groggy, very dazed, and confronted with Andy two feet away, asleep on the pillow next to me. As I negotiated with the spinning room, I heard Mum calling from downstairs. Someone's phone's ringing down here! So I shook Andy. Andy, your phone's ringing downstairs. After a bit of a groan, he motioned to get up, and then stopped, and said, Can you go and get it, please? No, go and get it yourself. Well, I haven't got any pants on. <laughs> what? Jesus Christ! Go and put some on then. <laughs> Again, he motioned to get up and stopped. Can't you just go? <laughs> I think I've got a bit of a lazy lob on. <laughs> Jump out of bed. <laughs> Tell my mum the story. His name was changed to Andy Gay on her mobile and mine. The only one of my friends I thought from then on was safer to sleep with my mum. <laughs> yesterday and I asked his dad what, what was he like at school and he said well I remember his first day he wasn't like the other five year olds in his class he was 11 <laughs> <laughs> I remember the very date I met Andy it was the 27th of December 2000 nearly 12 and a half years ago. I was meeting the manager of a newly established bar made in Sevenoaks about some evening and weekend shifts on my gap year. Andy, when I went in, was working behind the bar. At that time, Bob the Builder was number one with Kevin Fix It. <laughs> Luke was probably collecting his final Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Two days previously was my first ever mobile phone. It was
was this little beauty. <laughs> a Nokia 3210. <laughs> Complete with snake, a solitaire, and a calculator. <laughs> wow, one of the first phones with interchangeable faces. <laughs> Now, when I was researching this speech, I happened upon this and I thought, that's odd that I've known Andy the time, the length of time that I've had a mobile phone. <laughs> so I thought, I wonder if there's any similarities there. <laughs> so I googled Nokia 3210 review. <laughs> you might wonder what the relevance of me reading this review is. <laughs> For those of you who didn't know, 20-year-old Andy, during this period, was considered in Seven Oaks a bit of a catch with the ladies. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> he sported Gary Barlow peroxide highlights, a leather necklace adorned with shark teeth, <laughs> and drove around in a white Jeep one-litre convertible. <laughs> cutting-edge features will ensure the 3210 huge success. The 3210 can expect much of its success to a marketing campaign aimed predominantly at young people. It looks to be a hugely popular with those aged 15 to 25. They even got the age bracket. Whilst the option of additional colour via interchangeable faces will be popular amongst most, the 3210 should beware that it is not pigeonholed into the pretentious bracket. <laughs> With it also being smaller than other models, <laughs> Nokia is continuing to advocate that small is most certainly beautiful. <laughs> quickly became thick as thieves, known to a lot of Seven Oaks at that time as the Barmed Mafia. <laughs> we both did very well with phone numbers from female fraternity in Seven Oaks behind the bar, although I could never quite work out how Andy always had enough money to take pretty much every single one of them out for a drink. It was one night that Andy let me into his cartel proper. <laughs> By arriving 30 minutes early for his shift during happy hour, not only did he curry favour with the management team, but he could also purchase with his own money 100 bottles of Bex at £1 a bottle. As happy hour drew to a close, Andy would start his shift, and he was then able to effectively sell his own beer <laughs> at barmen premium prices of £3.25. <laughs> <laughs> A tiny little profit of 225 pounds cash during every shift. <laughs> <laughs> These were fun times indeed, and they culminated after a year in a monumental two weeks in Magaluf. <laughs> Let me tell you, he did his very best to disprove those gay rumours. <laughs> Not necessarily successfully, but he did. <laughs> he purchased various items of crap from Lucky Lucky Men before walking up the road and selling it back at a profit to one of their mates. <laughs> In an argument about Northerners being ignorant, he decided to prove the fact by taking some extra tablets and some M&Ms, turning them on their side and selling them to a drunk scouse group of clubbers as E. <laughs> <laughs> he was also responsible for our entire holiday kitty being stolen. Why, might you ask, was having £400 stolen and his fault? Well, it was stolen at 4 o'clock in the morning and it was stolen from Andy's trousers. This in itself wasn't the issue. The issue was that Andy wasn't wearing his trousers at the time of the theft. Andy wasn't wearing anything at the time. Andy was a hundred yards out to sea for a swim with nature as he put it when he came home, wrapped in a deck chair canvas. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was around this time that I upgraded to the 3310. <laughs> I hasten to add that my mum inherited it from me afterwards. It wasn't always pink. <laughs> The Nokia 3310 is a compact candy bar type mobile with all the basic features of a standard mobile. While still similar in personality to its predecessor, the 3210, this is a little bit more streamlined, a bit more user friendly, a bit more business like, and whilst you can still change its colour to suit your mood, it's a bit more subtle. That all adds up to much more professionalism and reliability. Loaded with four games, the 3310 can keep you entertained whilst you were idle. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was perspicacious again. This upgrade marks the end of our punk era. <laughs> Andy left Barmed and got a proper job, working on consumer relationship management for a leading engineering PLC, customer services at Aqualisa, to you and I. <laughs> As with the 3310, he was now demonstrating professionalism, reliability and user friendliness. Many of you know Andy, know that he doesn't suffer fools easily. He has his own way of dealing with them. And certainly this was the case for a certain Mr. Ram, who having recently purchased a range of Aqualisa products, was not happy with the water pressure being generated on his B-Day. <laughs> <laughs> working at Barmed and Andy would regularly pop in for a pint on the way home for a catch up. I was regaled every day for nearly a month about Mr. Rahm's sub power arse washer. <laughs> phone calls and letters Andy would receive as consumer relationship manager. Obviously not with this ongoing waste of time and having been asked by his manager to address it immediately, Andy, offering the now famous I'm Andy Stevens, you can trust me smile, <laughs> informed his client that it would be sorted once and for all within the week, and spoke to some engineers and arranged for a specially constructed and customised B-Day for Mr. Rob. For those of you not familiar with, the pre with water pressure, a large fire engine hose fires out the wet stuff at about 14 bar. That's pretty powerful. And we never heard from Mr. Rahm again, and we never found out whether it was A, because he was happy with the products he received, B, he'd given up on Andy, or C, that as he nestled his disgruntled and underscrubbed backside down, he was unaware that he was perching on what from that range would be tantamount to a neutron bomb. <laughs> When he was comfortable, he got the shock of his life as Andy's Super B-Day, with all of his 18 bars, <laughs> kicked in and received a rectum cleansing so powerful that he was fired up on an air-shaped an air water mushroom bouncing through his bathroom <laughs> And he didn't stay at Aquilisa. <laughs> <laughs> and he decided to go off to university. I was worried our friendship might suffer. I let him settle in for five or six months before heading up to Oxford for a little reunion with my old chum. It was during that separation there was the release of the Nokia 7650. <laughs> <laughs> it was strangely enough, also carried with it a review that uncannily mirrored my findings on arrival at his student digs. This one is particularly good. I'm sure. <laughs> Not my words, the words of Gadget Mum. <laughs> the initial response upon, upon being confronted with the 7650 is that it seems unnecessarily bulky. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. In fact, it's a brick in comparison to its predecessors. <laughs> but on closer inspection, it isn't unnecessary. It's fun filled with new features, not least of all a camera and a colour screen. <laughs> Whilst primarily looking to appeal to the more professional side of life, the 7650 is complete 
with a new joystick to fully experience all the fun that's inside. <laughs> <laughs> To address the glitches of overused buttons in the 8910 <laughs> Nokia 6300, Nokia has ensured that the joystick button is made of tougher stuff. <laughs> it's short, stubby look. <laughs> <laughs> Reduce maneuverability. It's a metal composite with rubber coating. There should be no concerns of overuse. <laughs> <laughs> say that Andy is very socially versatile. In any environment, he's more often than not able to adapt to his surroundings. And in the four or five times that I went to visit him in Oxford at university, I had some great nights and met some fabulous people. But on a serious note, I have to say that it was in Oxford that I felt a real galvanising of our friendship happened. Andy is king of the understatement. I was asleep in Seven Oaks one night when I was awoken at about 3 o'clock in the morning by a series of text messages. Hi mate, I hope you know that I wouldn't ask you if I didn't need to, but please can you come up to Oxford? I'm in a little bit of a pickle. <laughs> I called him and the phone was off. So I called in sick to work and jumped on the train. <laughs> on arrival in Oxford, it transpired that the little bit of a pickle was more like a full, full ploughman's buffet for the National <laughs> Farmers Union. <laughs> Within an hour, of arrival, we were back in his car and I was bringing him home to Seven Oaks. The months that followed were very fun. I was recently single, Andy was recently single. I was now working in London, Andy was now working in London. It was like the good old days. Between us there was enough baggage to fill Heathrow Terminal 5. But like the olden days there wasn't much emotional scarring that couldn't be beaten off with 15 pints of Guinness, 40 marble lights, a duet and a karaoke bar, and a back catalogue of Christmas cracker jokes and Essex chatter. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favourites from Andy's. Hello, love. I've got Alzheimer's. Do I come here often? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, sweet. I've lost my big polar bear. Have you got anything I can use to break the ice? <laughs> Quite often Andy would come back 
and my train station stop was on the way to Tunbridge Wells. I was living with three lads, he was living with uh, his sister. Quite often we'd jump off at mine and he'd come and sat at mine. That particular night, I said, do you want to come back and order a pizza? Maybe play some FIFA, go Evo. He wanted to get home. I think it was getting expensive in Thomas Pink buying a new shirt every morning because he'd been there for about a month. <laughs> so off he went and I didn't hear from him until 7.06 a.m. Good morning, handsome. Guess who got his mojo back? <laughs> <laughs> successful in ironing out the creases of doubt in life's fortunes that Andy may have had. Presumably you did so after a hot wash. <laughs> 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 whilst again, whilst you look so beautiful, I and all his family and friends thank you very, very much for loving and caring for my friend. Please look after him and lend him back from time to time. <laughs> So finally, 
Back to my buddy, my chum, my pal, and my friend. I've had you for as long as I've had my phone. <laughs> <laughs> First, both a bit annoying. <laughs> Restrictive of movements. Sometimes inc incriminating. <laughs> and sometimes just a pain in the ass to carry around. <laughs> With you, quite literally. <laughs> As the last 12 and a half years have gone by, I've seen you evolve, change and mature. I've seen you correct the faults and mistakes you made in your previous model. I've watched in horror as you plummeted towards a concrete floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also seen things that haven't quite been working inside, beneath the fascia, things that I don't know what's wrong with it, but I just know it needs fixing. Whilst I'm a little bit worried that Comparing you to a mobile phone might be a bit impersonal. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that I can't remember life without you now, and I'd struggle without the reassurance that you're there. So, as I wish you well on the nicest part of your life's adventure, I'm happy to relinquish many of my duties to the beautiful lady who sits before you. Whilst that's the case, of course, I'm always on hand if you ever need anything. Nicole. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, would you please join me and be upstanding, recharge your glasses, as I offer a toast to the very happy, the very beautiful couple, to Mr and Mrs Stevens. Mr Mrs Stevens.